God's grace, I'm good. All right. So we scheduled to speak with you days ago, but we were unable to do that. However, uh, I think it's right for us to now check up on you, how you're doing, how the team is doing so far. What's going on with you? I mean your health. Well, so a lot happened to us, and we needed to make sure uh, we were okay, uh, short term and long term. Um, what I mean is that we received a lot of punches and slaps, and we needed to make sure that one, uh, uh, all fixes are good. Uh, our eyes, my, mine, for example, was with my right eye, which um, was not really looking good uh, that day. Um, some of my colleagues, um, the drone pilot received a lot of blows to the head, so at the point he wasn't hearing well in one ear. So yesterday he also got that checked. And he's been giving medication, and I think it's, 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 it's getting better. Mine, I had a thorough eye screening yesterday by doctors at the Confirmacy Teaching Hospital. Myself, I have eye issues, so adding pressure uh, to that one, I wanted to make sure that the back of the eye is okay. Uh, thank God uh, it's looking good. So I think we are good. I, uh, the last time I spoke with you, uh, that was like two days or three days ago. You said you weren't seeing clearly. How's your vision now? Yeah, that was in the right eye, but um, it's better. It's better. Mm, have you seen any specialists yet? Yes, yesterday, um, I must say uh, thank you to Dr. Mahmoud Tima, who is a, an eye specialist at the Confanoti Teaching Hospital. Um, he had some time for me, about an hour of screening and um, it got checked out. Now I think it's okay. My fears have been allayed, so I'm good. All right. Erasmus, for the benefit of those who don't know exactly what happened, just in about two minutes, tell us what happened to you. So um, about three weeks ago, we normally we have a lot of uh, information coming from well-meaning Ghanaians, from communities, from chiefs, from politicians, uh, policemen, even soldiers. And sometimes I even wonder why uh, you know, people clothed with powers will rather come to a journalist instead of uh, going out to enforce the law. But I think it's obvious that they are afraid of victimization. And so we had one such information stream that was coming from a prominent Ghanaian who was not happy um, with what was being done to the Asananyo Forest Reserve, which is in the Amasya South uh, District. And the, the, the river uh, Asananyo, which flows into the Ankubra, uh, he was not happy that it was being polluted the way it was by a, a, a company that has a license to mine, at least. So he sent me a copy of the licenses and uh, some pictures as well. But, you know, even when we have such compelling information, we do not go ahead to report. It's not our style. We, we deal with it professionally. We will want to go to the field, check it out ourselves, know the level of distraction before we report. Mm. So we set out on uh, Sunday, and uh, we left the Kumasi about 6 a.m. We reached the site at Esumenya. Esumenya is close to Mansonkai. Um, if you pass through Sefi, you go through Sefi Asarenso uh, to Sefi Mirewa to Aboso before you get to Esumenya. And we flew the drone to check uh, the place. And we saw that there were two gentlemen, young men, and uh, some women on site in some makeshift apartment. And so we entered, greeted them, and we started our investigations on the ground. And indeed, uh, what we found was uh, 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 enforcing the fact that what the uh, gentleman sent us was indeed correct. Mm -hmm. uh, the stream, the, the, the river, Asananyo, you could not even identify it from the mess that has been created over there. They, they, contrary to law, they did not have any tailings dam or they did not have any settling ponds that will contain the poisonous mining residue uh, from the operation. In fact, they were using uh, illegal uh, mining methods, artisanal washing methods. Normally, large scale, you are supposed to use uh, a certain kind of method to extract it, to process your gold. 
That was not being done. They were using artisanal illegal methods uh, to wash on the field. And the devastation, Annie, was extensive, more than the guy sent us. In fact, we flew the drone for minutes on end, and it wasn't ending. And what broke my heart was the fact that there were trees. The place is part of a land restoration project that the government has spent money to grow trees, citronella trees, and they've matured. And this guy has pulled all of them, if not all of them, majority of them down to mine. So in a way, we paid money to restore that forest, and we are pulling it down with no proper mining method. So in the midst of filming, then I heard one of the two young men we met at the site speaking on the Motorola and telling somebody that some media personnel are here, so you should come. Normally when we hear that, it's not something we ignore because, one, it could be they are inviting the owner of the mining site to come. Two, it could be they are inviting um, hoodlums, thugs, to come and assault you. So I asked the drone pilot to bring the drone down. But the drone had gone very far, and so it, it takes time for it to, you know, maneuver, take its time, correct itself, get the GPS directions, and come back. So before the drone could touch down, we saw over 10 heavily armed, and they were all holding pump-action guns, running towards us. So we had to just wait and see what would happen. When they came, before the drone could touch down, one of them reached for it hmm. and nearly broke the propellers. Then they took our camera. They did a, a thorough body search of all of us, took everything that was in our pockets, uh, phones, gadgets, and other things. Then they took my jacket because they, they said I could be hiding cameras in the Joy-branded jacket, so they took it. Then with a, with a gun following us. In fact, at a point I was, I, I, I didn't know, but these are people, if you look at their faces, some of them you could see they were under the influence of something. They were high on something, and they were holding pump action guns. And the way they were brandishing it, at a point they were clocking it, removing bullets and putting them back. Seriously, I was scared, but I had to maintain my calm. They said we should get into our vehicle by force. They are taking us to see the owner of the site. I said, where is the owner of the site? They said the next town uh, called Dawusaso. I said, okay, fine. We got into the vehicle. One guy who was holding a pump action got behind the driver, sat behind the driver. Another one sat in the bucket. Then two vehicles were ahead of us armed uh, with people in it. Then behind us, another vehicle, we had motorbikes flanking us. We drove for 20 minutes. We got to Dawusaso. Then they were going past Dawusaso, the town. They said we were going and entering into the bush. So I stopped the car. I asked the driver to stop the car. And the moment as we stopped, all the armed guards came towards the car. Why have we stopped? And I said, we, we need to know where you are taking us. So you tell us where you are taking us. Because you said we're going to see the owner at the USA. So now we're going past that. We are entering the bush. So tell us. In fact, they were rather angry. They said, we came to their site illegally. So we do not have the right to ask questions. If the driver cannot drive, they pointed the gun at the driver that he should get out for the other driver to drive our vehicle. I said, no. So we got back, and I, t I told the driver to just follow them. Because the way they were brandishing the guns, I didn't want to infuriate anybody, so they fired accidentally or something. So we kept going. 20 more minutes, we entered some bushy, secluded area with an untied road. They entered the untied road and then stopped. Then they asked all of us to get down. Seriously, at that time, it was like somebody leading you into an unknown area and asking you to get down so he shoots you. That was what was running in my head. 
So I hesitated in getting out. And I asked the guy, why are you bringing us to this bushy area? Where is the owner of the site? Before I could say Jack, I received two hot slaps from behind. And they pulled me out. They pulled my other colleagues out. And then the beating started. So one will hit you from the back. The other one will hit you from the front. Slaps from behind. Everybody, like, this one will come and slap you, go behind, and another person will slap you. So at the point I told them, you can't be doing this. What is the purpose of this? What do you want? We are doing a legitimate job. If you feel that we have offended the law, then take us to the police station. But you cannot subject us to this beating. Then they told us to, they gave us our phones, said we should take our phones, uh, apply the password, open the phone for them to format the phone. I said, you can't format my phone. Why are you formatting my phone? They said, we're taking pictures at the site. I said, fine. That is even illegal. I have every right to take pictures. But if you want to delete your pictures, I can open the phone, uh, the uh, photo folder for you. Then you delete what you think is there. But if you say you are formatting my phone, then that's not right. Then that one also attracted a series of slaps because they, they said I was trying to be a hero. So how many slaps did you receive? Come again, Annie. How many slaps did you receive? I, I, I can't count. I can't count. Okay. Um, so they took you into the forest and then uh, left you there. So after they deleted pictures from my phone, they formatted the phones of my colleagues, uh, some of my colleagues. Then they took a bag uh, in, the, uh, in the car. It contained our drone batteries, five of them, a tablet, a, a headset. And they took my Joy branded jacket and they left. Okay. Okay. So that's when you called for help. So we went to the next town, uh, the uh, Mansonkai police station. Okay. to report but we were told we do not uh, they did not have jurisdiction so we should go to Mansour Dubia and we went to Mansour Dubia did a report they gave us medical forms we went to the hospital we came back and they gave us armed policemen numbering about eight then we went back to the site they said they were going to arrest them we went back to the site yes we met them all right they were there this time they I don't know where their guns were. They did not have any guns. But they engaged the police in heated verbal exchanges, some of them saying, threatening them that uh, uh, their government is in power. And, and so they won't board any police vehicle. They won't go. So the police came back, sat in a car, said we should go back to the station without them. So we went back without a single arrest. In fact, they arrested the two young people who called the metro men in. But with the metro men, the armed people, none of them was arrested. Then we went back, wrote our statements, and left the place around 9 p.m. back to Kumasi. A day, uh, the next day, the Bekwai command uh, called me. They put together reinforcement, said we should go back to the site. We went back to the site. There was nobody there. Where I suspected they would be, I told the police to go there. They said no. Their vehicles cannot go there. So we came back. Um, what's the name of the company that owns the site? It's called Adel Metallum Resources Limited. Adel Metallum Re Resources. And, and there and are checks. It belongs to one, Simon Aiden and Reynolds Quack. Simon Aiden. Simon Aiden. And then Reynolds. And Reynolds. Quack. Reynolds. Quack. Quashi. Quabi. K W A B I. B I. Okay. The police gave us some updates that they had arrested three persons. What has, what has happened to them? In fact, yesterday, we also tried to find out what has happened to them. And um, the police were seeking our, um, uh, um, you know, uh, I 
I don't know whether they, our advice or I should put it this way, but they were asking, they wanted to proceed uh, with prosecution, and we said yes, that's what we want. Okay, are you? Are you and any... this morning, I have not spoken with them, so I don't know. Mm, but is what you, has happened is, there. is you and your team taking any action against the uh, the owner of the site, the mining site? Legal action, I know. My, I know my company is working on something. I have not been fully uh, Brief. briefed on what okay. the actions are, so I'm, I'm waiting. But okay. on the uh, license, the mining uh, leads I have seen, uh, the MD, the name on the, on the sheet, the MD is Philip Esteem Kuchinyo. And while the director stroke secretary is Adeline Tete, and per our checks, uh, Simon Aiden is the owner of the lease, and Reynolds Kwabi is the operations manager. Okay. Okay. Erasmus, we'll leave you here. Thank you. And then we're, we're, we're glad that you're in good health now. We'll check up on you later. I'm grateful, Annie.